So I've had a few inquiries about the frequency response of these new 2E26 amps. So I'm going to demonstrate that with the assistance of Tube Amp Girl. Then, when we're done, I'm going to go into some basic functional descriptions of a tone circuit in your typical amplifier. So here we go. It's Terry here at D-Lab, and I have Tube Amp Girl in the shop. And so, as you know, I'm training up Tube Amp Girl to take over D-Lab worldwide, right? Yeah. So, the question of the day, Emmy, since you're going to start working on amplifiers, so here's the question. What is tone? Well, uh, the tone is volume. Okay. Uh, you know, in a way, tone does affect volume. But what tone does is it makes high frequencies and low frequencies. So like you, you like bass when you're listening to music, right? The bump, bump, bump. So on the radio, what knob do you turn up that bass knob? Right? Because you like that. Now if you want to hear like cymbals or higher frequencies, you turn up what knob? Treble. I know you're thinking it. Treble, right? Okay. So that is what all my amplifiers have. They have what's called a tone circuit, all right? So if you look at this little amp, this is Grandpa's newest little 2E26 amp. I have volume, which you talked about. This knob is treble, and this knob is bass. So what we can do is I've got this cool magical instrument here, and this will show you what that amplifier is doing when it sees those frequencies. And then when we turn up treble or bass, you'll see that, okay? So let's go ahead and run this thing, and then you can play the knobs and see what it does. Sound good? All right, All right here's what we're going to do. This instrument is a signal analyzer, okay? And it's going to look at the output of this amp. Put your hand right there and tell me what you think. It's hot. Yeah! And why is it hot? because there's a big tube right there, right? So to do this, I'm gonna shut the lights off so people can see the display, all right? So look at that green glow. You gotta tell me that's very cool, huh? That's what D-Lab does. Remember, you're Miss D-Lab, right? Yeah, nice high five. All right, so what we have is volume, treble, and bass, all right? So these are the tone controls. This is a spectrum analyzer, so I'm going to hit this button, and this is what we call flat response, okay? So it's just going to go through a frequency sequence, and it's going to say, hey, amp, I'm giving you this equal tone. Tell me how you can reproduce it, and that's what you're going to see. So you watch this screen. If you want to zoom in there, camera person. So here we go, frequency response test time of the new 2E26 amp. So here is the source input coming from the signal analyzer. Then the output of the amp goes through a dummy load resistor, and that is hooked to channel 1 of the analyzer. All right? So what I'm going to do is we'll initially start off with flat response, and then We'll go through enhance treble, bass, and see what that does to the response curve on the analyzer. Initial test, we're at flat response. In other words, the bass and treble are straight up, running the amp at approximately half power. So let's do a sweep start. Let's see what we get. We're going from 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz on the sweep. There it is, pretty flat. You can see obviously at the very low frequencies, she takes a little bit of time to come up and then tries to maintain flat response. So that's pretty darn good for a class A amp. Now, let's take the treble all the way up and we're gonna leave the base where it's at. And sweep away.
you listen really close, you can hear that audio coming out of the dummy load resistor. So now you can see our bass comes up, and then we have enhanced treble since I have that cranked up. Now I'm going to put the treble flat and crank up the bass. Here we go. So there you can see that the response is almost the same as when she was flat. So that indicates to me that this amp doesn't have the greatest of bass response. So it would be more of an amp for like lead guitar playing. And if you looked at some of the past videos that I did on the 2E26, it is a very bright and responsive amp. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the treble all the way down and we're going to turn the bass back to flat and let's see what that does. Alright, now we reverse that We'll go treble all the way up and bass all the way down. So just a ton of high frequency response. Now the high frequency response has a lot to do with the output transformer that you use. In this case I have that generic PT31 that I showed you in the schematic. If I were to change that to say a triode type or pull something out of an old Fender Champ, these frequency response curves would be completely different. Okay, so I mean you can see the amp has enhanced bass when you turn that little knob up so what does that remind you of? What, what does that do for you? Special guest. Alright, Emmy, so to simplify what a tone circuit really is, Grandpa is going to give an example using water. What do you think of that? Okay. All right, let's go. Now here we have a typical Fender tone circuit. So when you see your bass and treble controls on the front of a Fender amp, this is what's going on behind the scenes. So if you were to compare this circuit to what you'd see on a Fender Princeton or maybe even a Champ that has bass and treble, you're going to see the same configuration. People have asked me over the years, what's the best tone circuit? Well, you're looking at it, all right? But for those of you that really can't find your way through the schematic diagram, what I've decided to do is make it a little bit easier. So we are going to envision this tone circuit as water, all right? So right here, we have a water tank, and I've got a couple valves. So picture these valves as the same type of valves that you would have in your shower. So in one direction you'd have cold water, another direction you'd have hot water, and in the middle you'd have warm water. All right? So here is our input, like your guitar. It's going to produce treble, which we'll call hot water. It's going to produce bass, which we're going to call the cold water. And then we're going to have the mid-range which goes down here, which would be a mix of the bass, okay? So you see here that it says mid is a fixed level. Well, that's because if we look back at the schematic, you would see that Fender used a 6.8K resistor as a fixed value for mid-range. So when your bass was all the way down, you would have this fixed resistance, which would give you a level of mid-range, which was not adjustable, okay? 
So back to the water flow diagram. So this valve right here, which is treble, if I were to divert that all the way this direction, I would only have the hot water, or in this case, high frequencies. That would go over to my volume control, and I have another valve, which I can deflect either this direction or this direction for the amplitude to the output, which in this case is this holding tank. Now, if I were to take my trouble control and advance down this way, now I'm looking at the output of this valve, which is a base control. And in this amp, it's actually base to mid-range, right? Because you have this fixed level of mid-range. So I can use this valve and I can say I want more bass or I want less bass which turns into mid-range. That goes through the valve. Now you can see you have a mix of bass and treble or warm and cold. Goes through the treble control which in this case if I were to turn it all the way down this way I would divert just bass and mids into my volume control. Right. So let's say that you wanted to add a mid-range control. So what you would do, instead of having the mid fixed level, right, which was that 6.A K resistor, you would add another control. So let's say that you put in a 0 to 10K pot, right? So you could dial the mid-range back to the 6.8K if you want it to be like the stock bass and treble circuit that Fender had, right? Or you can adjust that mid now and get a different level of mid-range, or in this case we'll call it the cold water flow, through this valve, through that valve, to your volume control, and to the output section. So that's how you actually add mid-range. It's nothing more than changing a fixed resistance with a variable. So I hope that this diagram makes it a little bit easier to understand that these controls, I'll go back to the original, are nothing more than panning controls, right? So I can pan up and get trouble, or I can pan down and get either base, mid, or mix of the two. And then that flows through the center of the trouble control to the top of the volume control, and then you have an amplitude control which goes to the rest of the amp. So I'm sure that was pretty super elastic for your bubble plastic, and a great way for me to introduce the new D-Lab 2E26 amps. These things are my cookie cutter design. I'm having a lot of fun building them and putting them in these vintage cabinets. Take a look at the back side of that baby, huh? Glows in the dark. A little green Martian living in it too. Pretty soon, I'll get a demo of this thing. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this clarifies how a tone circuit operates. I plan on doing more videos like this to make amps a little more basic so that it's easy to understand to get you guys more involved in the hobby. We'll see you again. Terry here, D-Lab.